So today we're going to be placing this this furnace here. Uh, we're going to replace it with one that, weirdly enough, looks identical to it. So it looks big and unwieldy, but it shouldn't be too hard. So let's just go ahead and get started on disconnecting the power to these wires and then disconnecting the wires. Right here is what the thermostat looks like. On the bottom is the heat adjuster. It goes from 35 to 85. And on the side is heat and off. So we want to go ahead, flip that to off, then we'll be able to service the furnace. Now you should have a piece of paper. Usually it's written on the side, but I just got it written on this that says what every circuit breaker does and where it goes. And then these two on the bottom go to the furnace, so we're going to turn them off. So right now they should be off. We'll verify that at the site too to make sure there's no energy or power or potential so that it could potentially kill us. It's generally a good idea to label all these wires before removing them. When they're all together, it looks like it'd be pretty easy enough to remember where they go. But in all reality, it usually just turns into a big spider web once you start to disconnect everything. That's why it's always a good idea to put labels on them. Try to get this stuff out of the way for now. And then remove this plate here. Actually, one second. Provide a slightly better perspective here. So we want to remove this plate. set that aside for now. Actually, probably set it more aside than that. You want to make sure these screws stay with the plate so we know it's easier to get it back together then. I mean, even though the screws may look identical, sometimes it's a little tricky. One will be a different size than the other. All right, so we got these cables coming out. Two ground wires down here, we're gonna have to we're gonna need a flathead to disconnect that. And these wires here coming from the fur, from the circuit breaker panel, we're also gonna need a flathead to disconnect them. So we gotta disconnect these six wires here. Alright, so there's two screws back in here. them two off and now let's see if All right, so we got this screw on the top that needs to be removed as well. So now the tricky part comes where we have to lift it straight up to get past these wires here and to get past the hoses as well. So that yeah, requires a bit of um, trickery here, but we'll just give it a shot.
As you can see, the apparatus has been removed. Now you may have noticed at the end of that last video, at the end of the last clip, we I accidentally bumped the camera and that pretty much shut it off. So that's why the scene mysteriously cut off like that. So yeah, we got the plumber's putty around the edges and we basically just need to set a new one on. Now the tricky part will be setting it over the top of those wires, but just go ahead and do that then. Now as you can see, we're prepared to place the new furnace on. Let's just try to set the furnace on there as it is right now. See how that works out. I'm sure it won't be easy, but you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't be worth doing if it was easy. So there's always that to consider. All right, let's try to walk it over there. And there we have it. Now, now don't be deceived by how easy that, that, that looked right there. It was a bit difficult, but we were able to get her done. So now we'll hook up these wires and make sure there's no... Make sure the insulation wasn't broken or anything like that, so we're going to have to check that too. So let's just go ahead and do that. All right, so we got these wires hooked back up. Now we need to hook up these signal wires here, and then we should be good to go. All right, we took a few of these plates off, so we're going to put them back on. Alright, so we can put the signal wires on. So let's just look at the label here, red. So red to red. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to wrap it around there. Now we had to place these two screws back in here. Looks like it aligned with where it was, so it's always a good sign. And we have to fasten the one up here back on. Here's that it's Probably about, I'm all right there. Well, that appears to be the wrong hole. 
it's not fastening to a stud. That's why I just slid right in there like that. So let's try this one. See, that's a nice firm connection. All right, we want to turn on the thermostat first because that's low voltage, 24 voltage to the furnace. So hopefully nothing will blow up. All right, so those are the two circuit breakers. So let's turn them back on. When you turn them on, make sure to listen. So if you hear any explosions, turn them back off right away. No explosions, so so far so good. One last circuit breaker is the one that actually goes from the box to the furnace. Let's go ahead. And now you can hear it making noise now, so obviously it's doing something. Now before we run the furnace here, we want to put this cover back on. Because this cover actually has a filter in here. So you always want to filter, have filtered air coming through the furnace. It's good for the fan, and it's also good for the air quality. Make sure it's good down there, otherwise it'll rattle a bunch. So it should be ready for testing now. Now as we move the thermostat here, listen for a click as soon as our setting gets above the temperature. That was the click. Now in a little bit the furnace should come on. So it appears we have a working furnace, which is a good sign. And you don't hear any loud noises or screeching or anything. Also a good sign. So if you're at your cabin this weekend and you want to change your furnace or you have to change your furnace, that's pretty much how to do it. Now if you got a natural gas furnace or hot water heater, a few more pipes you gotta disconnect, but that's about it. Pretty simple stuff. I mean anyone with Two arms and a brain could probably do it. Two legs helps too. Uh, three arms would be ideal, but two is enough. If you have a helper too, that, that works too. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps out.